Now that we have a good understanding of the functionality offered by both Twilio and Pusher, and have used these features in some practical settings, let's look at how we can bring this all together one last time. In this case, we will build an activity stream which lists activity in real time on an IVR menu system. This will involve taking the IVR system we built in section 3, updating it to push activity to pusher, and then listening to the pusher channel to build an activity stream. Let's start by creating a helper function in our bootstrap.php file. This function will push activity to pusher for us after being provided with a number, a message, and the pusher client. Now you might be wondering why we need a helper function when there is a single method call that we need to make to pusher to log the activity, which is pusher trigger. Well, the reason is we want to do some work with the phone number the user is calling. If we recognize the number, we want to pick out their name and gravatar so that the activity stream looks more meaningful than just numbers and activities. If we know the number, then we can show their name and a picture. Of course, this relies on us knowing the details of the callers beforehand. In a real-world application, this information will be looked up from a database when the call is made. The IVR is the same as from section 3, except we're passing the number of the caller and a brief message along with the pusher client to our push activity helper function. We need to repeat this process for other parts of our IVR system, including the gather callback, changing the message depending on the option that's selected. One change we can make is to set a status callback for the phone number, which we will do in a moment. This means we can also push to pusher when the status of a call changes, such as the caller hanging up or other statuses. In this instance, we simply pass the caller and the call status to pusher. As our IVR has recording and transcribing built in, we also want to push the activity when the user goes to leave a message and also when the message has been transcribed. Now that we have our IVR updated, we need to update our number at Twilio to pass the caller to the IVR system, and also to pass the status updates to our status update callback script. We can do this with the number update method which we've used earlier. Remember, if you're using Vagrant, you need to be sharing your Vagrant environment with Vagrant Share to ensure the IVR system is accessible over the internet. If we open up the Pusher Debug console, we will see these activities being pushed as we make a call, so let's open that up and make a test call. This allows us to test our changes to the IVR code without having to make the pusher activity stream just yet. This prevents the problem of trying to work out if we have a bug in either the IVR system or our activity stream. Here we've rapidly updated our IVR system to push activity to a private pusher channel. We've also introduced a call status callback to push call status changes to. Finally, we tried it out and checked the data in the pusher debug console. Next, we need to build a pusher front end for our activity stream to instantly relay this information securely to an administrator.